Hello everyone. Today I thought I'll show how to create this form uh, for this pavilion. I thought it has a, a really interesting twist to the form. Uh, interesting to explore how to do it in Revit. This pattern that goes around. I can see that it's, it creates a concentric pattern. Completely different to the way the form is. Patterns in Revit are divided surfaces in Revit are, are hard to control the way that the pattern is applied. Uh, it can be quite a problem, but I would like to explore and see what's visible. This was just an exercise I was doing at a, a workshop at Chavantel, but uh, I'm gonna start here a new family in Metric Mass. So. If I do just draw two lines, and if I create form from these two lines, and I'll just select the face, and I divide the surface, you see that you get these corners, the pattern is not really aligned with the lines that I drew. It's interesting to figure out why this happens, and how can we change this pattern. For instance, if I start drawing here another line, and use a reference line, and I create form from this, and divide. So here in this case, the one of the grids is aligned with my lines. If I change it like this, it won't be, just like the previous case. But if I just lift the point, it changes with me, and both grids are aligned. So if it's flat, it goes back, and if it's just a little bit raised, both grids will be aligned, which is an odd behavior. If we look at what a circle surface would do, it would still remain uh, orthogonal. And uh, if, for instance, I would do a revolve by drawing these lines, and I divide the surface, then I would get a concentric uh, orientation of the grid. So to get this concentric form that is not a revolve, is applied on a surface that is twisted, it's really tricky. I'm not sure if it's the best way to do this in Revit in the end, but what I want to explore is the things that, that work in Revit and could be achievable and understand the tool a little bit so I can take some conclusions. So I did this thing, I drew the way I thought that I was going to draw this, uh, create this form. So these red lines would be uh, a path that the blue profiles would have to take. So it's like I want to do a lot that would follow that path from one profile to one blue profile to the other. So this is the way I was rationalizing what I wanted to do. So if I just go here and create some reference points just for uh, have an idea of scale. And if you look at uh, here in my uh, channel and videos, there is this one that not a lot of people look at about spines. And if you look at some point here, I'm exploring the difference between the spine, normal spine, and the spine through points. And I draw a spine, and I draw another spine through points on top of it, and I see that they behave different, very different. And then I create these spine through points on top of the circles to try to understand how to make it smooth. And by uh, comparing the, the two ways of doing spine, Basically, my conclusions are that the spine, the move spine, can be a lot smoother, easier to control, but the spine through points uh, gives us uh, other features that we need. So I use the fusion here just to compare the smoothness, but basically, the regular spine is better, but we have to keep the least, least points we can to keep it a uh, nice curvature. So don't add more points than you need. So I started here drawing my base 
path, so the red ones. And if I draw on the other side, well, I'll just try close enough. So if I come back here, I realize that in this video that the spine through points and locked uh, here it's showing that it match doesn't match the normal regular spine, but spine, spine through points and locked. Uh, behave in the same way. So I know that my loft will behave the way this spine behaves. So that's why I'm drawing it as well, so that I can uh, see how many points or how many profiles my, my loft would have to have. So I was deleting in, uh, points to see, use the list I can, but I know that I'll need that many lofts as points I'm putting now in the spine. If I want to achieve the curvature I need. Now we should do the, the blue profiles. So on an elevation, trying to make it look similar. And maybe I can create here a new uh, line subcategory, so my own reference uh, line style so I can uh, look at it better, it's different. So if I select this one, I have to make it reference because I, I added a subcategory from reference lines and reduce the scale, it's too thick. Reduce the scale. So selecting these lines and I have to make a reference and then change to my reference line. Everything will be orange looks better. So I can distinguish what's my reference uh, spline. I'm using, using the normal spline just for reference because it will be smoother, but the lofts will have to be done with the spline through points later. But I, at least I have the, the reference with less points and made with a way that I can control to be better. So just quickly trace over with the spine through points because this is the one that's gonna create the loft and uh, try to do that curvature. So I can see in the elevation where my uh, spines are starting, the base ones. So I I guess I need to see where these ones start as well. Because my profile is going to go from uh, one point to, to the other and I, I couldn't see it uh, in the elevation. So just wait if I need uh, to see the curvature. Let's make these um, reference as well, so they look orange, so reference line. So now if I grab all these points, the points from my spline through points, I have to deassociate the reference, the host plane, the points there, so I can move them, and now I'm just adjusting them. And I tile the windows here, because I can constantly look at what moving in plan is doing to the elevation because I want this to look a nice curve in all the views. And it also helps because I'm I'm trying to see which point I'm actually grabbing. Uh, because just in plan I don't know if I'm grabbing the lower or the higher point. So I can look at all at the same time. So this is what I have. The problem now is that I can't make the two profiles loft along two paths. If I draw this one here just for uh, as an example, if I have one path, I can have two different profiles, two different sizes, and I can create the form from all of them. And it, it will change from this one profile to the other along the path. So it's a sweep with a sweep length. And uh, 
here, of course, it doesn't work. Uh, it's very different. It's not the way it works. And of course, alone, it would do something totally different. So we want to make those profiles, or the, this loft, uh, go along that path in two ways. So how do we do it? Uh, there is this other video, another one that doesn't get many views, because it's a bit boring, just trying to explain the way things behave. And I'm, I drew a, not just points, if you look in the left, they are lines, so they are doing lots. But you will see that when you select three points here, you can't create a lot. And if you select three other points, it will work like, like in this way to work because it's taking a direction. Usually from bottom left corner to top right. Uh, but this is in plan view on elevation as uh, it behaves in a different way. But basically, Revit, when he creates a loft, he doesn't know where, or he has to decide which one is the first profile, which one is the second. So if your profiles are doing some odd path up and down, he'll try to figure out on his own which one is the first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So the logic that he, he uses is this bottom left first, and going to the top right is the second and third and so on. Interesting to think. But anyway, this is what we're going to have to do here. So if I grab one of these profiles, we're going to have to align them the way we want, lock them, and then move them back to its position. See if I selected what I wanted, and I'm going to move it away a little bit. So I need another profile. So I'm going to do one at the very end. It's easier to make up. So I'm thinking that's a profile that will create a lot that is in those points, intersecting those points. So if I draw a reference line, I want to know where they are. So in my plan view, if I draw reference points, so I can remember I can see in the elevation where it is supposed to start. I'll create this, this profile here. Just adjust however and create the spine through points. So now again I have to move it. I have to disassociate the posts so I can move them. And now I'm just going to drag them point by point to where they should be. This is a bit of a, bit of a manual process, but uh, it's got to be done. So after I move them in the orientation I want, or in, or in one direction, uh, that I know that will create a lot, I can move it back, and it's twisting the way I want. Then there is this uh, select the face and use the app profile. And you can actually select this profile and edit. And I'm going to draw again over with the spine through again and delete the existing spine because what this gives me is points that I can drag. The original profile, when you add a new profile to a face, you can't edit the spine like this. So as I'm redrawing, now I have these points that I can drag. It is, it's really not bad the way you can do it. And you didn't have to guess completely the profiles just by doing them separately. You're creating them after a form and modifying, at least you have a base. Although here it looks like it did something quite odd. Usually I just have to make a few changes because the loft is created and the profile needs to be adjusted. So then you have this x-ray 
uh, if you select and you do x-ray you can see all the spines all the points you can again tile the window so you can see the elevations and have a better look of the curvature and uh, you can adjust them until they look smooth you know so in the end it does look smooth so this is the form that I wanted to show you I'll continue and uh, show you more about the pattern what can be done to, to do a pattern that's more custom in the next video so,